In this video, we are going to talk about five ways that a Kong or Kong type toy can be dangerous to your dog. So let's just jump into this video, right? Meow. Y'all know that I am obsessed with a good Kong. I think this is an excellent way to mentally stimulate your puppy or your dog. But like anything in life, if not used correctly, it can be very very dangerous and this is not something that I see a lot of people talking about so let's just jump into it uh, first things first I want to make sure that I pick the right size and durability for my dog so I have two of them for my dogs I get the biggest one I can find uh, because they're big boys each of my boys are about 60 pounds this is Finn and you can see Ben over here in my chocolate lab so I make sure that it is absolutely impossible for him to swallow. A good way to figure that out is I want one that's about as, can I see your head? About as big as his head. <laughs> which this one is. And I wanna make sure that I get the most durable one because I have two strong chewers. I always get one step higher in terms of dur durability than what you think. So maybe you're like, well, my dog is only a medium chewer. They don't chew a whole bunch. Then get the strong one. Don't get the one that matches your dog. At least that's my opinion. And so sizing is important because this can be a very dangerous toy and tool even if you're supervising, if it's something that they can even moderately swallow. If you think that your dog needs a size small, I'd probably just go with the size medium. That's just the way I go for it because I want there to never be a risk that they could swallow it, especially because many times we put food or treats inside of it. Now that leads me to the next way that this could be dangerous and all the dogs, all the rescue dogs that I have fostered, which is over 55, probably close to 60 at this point. And the two dogs that I've raised on my own, I've never, never realized this could be an issue until this kid here showed this to me. So while I did get them the biggest one, and I still think that this is the best for him, the reason I would never feed this supervised to my, unsupervised, I should say, I would never give this to my boys to chew on unsupervised is because, let's see if he'll, let me show you guys here. So you guys can see this hole, can I show them Finn? I'm gonna be gentle. He can actually fit his jaw in there, his bottom jaw. You guys can kind of see that. I'm not gonna force it, but his bottom jaw can actually fit down inside the hole here. And what he'll do is when I put his frozen meal in here, you guys know he eats a raw frozen food diet. If you don't know what that is, you can click links down below. As he's trying to chew it out when it's frozen, he'll actually just barely be able to, but he can get big chunk of his bottom jaw in there and scooping at it. And that can be dangerous because if his jaw gets in there and gets stuck and I'm not there to supervise, oh, that could be dangerous. Even if I am there to supervise. So while size is important and I like to go bigger when possible, that is something I want you guys to keep note of because you never want this to get like stuck on your dog, huh Finn? Yeah, only you, only you would find such a crazy way to potentially make this thing Dangerous. And on that note, when choosing a Kong or any toy, really, you want to match what your dog's chewing strength is. So we talked about before that my dogs are both strong chewers. Well, I made sure to get the most durable one I could find, and I actually went the Kong brand. There are knockoff brands, but what I found with those is my dogs are able to chew off little parts of it on the circle ends and the openings. And that's because I think that they're just not as high quality as the Kong. You okay, Bubby? So I just make sure that you don't get a puppy version of one of these for your big dog and really make sure that it says strong, durable, chewer. And on that note, if you have a really young puppy, these can be really great toys, but they do have ones that are a little bit softer. They're actually made for puppies. I've never, I don't know if we tried one for Finn. I know we definitely did not try that for Ben, but there is, a new puppy coming into my life soon, if not already, depending on when this video goes live. I have videos linked down below um, introducing you to that new puppy that'll be coming into my world, and I'll probably give that a try with them. Now, this next one is so super dangerous and is probably the number one reason I would never let my boys chew on this alone. Now, you guys know that the primary use I have for this Kong is I stuff it with their food. Again, you guys know that I feed them a raw, fresh food diet. You can click the link up here to see what that means if you don't know what that means or to be linked below. I put their food in here, which is like a softer food essentially, and I freeze it and I let them chew at it. I usually do it while I'm working throughout the day because I do work remotely or let's say I'm watching some Netflix or whatever it might be and they work at it and it'll take Ben, gosh, he 
will take maybe 45 minutes to get through this large Kong. You can see this, I have a for size perspective, this is an iPhone 11 Pro, and this is the size of it. So it's about as big as their head, and it'll take Bentley about 45 minutes, and Finn will get through this in like 20 to 30 minutes, because he loves food. Because of that, when the food is all stuffed in here, or if you're stuffing peanut butter or whatever, it can actually create a suction. So a lot of dogs will kind of chew at this and suck at it to get the treat or food out. And a suction pressure can be created getting their tongue or part of their mouth suctioned to this and stuck on. And that can be dangerous, it can be painful, and can potentially require a vet visit. Now Kong has a second hold here to prevent that, but if you're stuffing this with something and you're freezing it, then that hole is essentially covered up so they could still get a suction. So one thing I've seen people do is after they stuff their food in here, they'll take like a metal straw, put it through the hole so that a hole is created all the way through and then freeze. That's something you could consider. I just make sure that I supervise them while doing this and if I notice they're getting too uh, focused on sucking or, or trying to like get that food out, I may take it away for a few minutes so they don't get too compulsive about it. But that is a huge issue that you have to be careful of because there have been issues in the past uh, before they added the hole here. Another reason that I don't always pick the knockoff brands, although although I'm sure there are some great knockoff brands out there, I just I haven't looked for it. So uh, if there are, comment below. I'd love to learn more. I, I'd love to try different ones that are like this. In addition to that, I have seen some Kong type toys where they have extra things on them, I think around the holidays or something like that, and those aren't my favorite. Less is more when it comes to this because the less things that my dog can pull off of it, the better in my opinion. I think I've seen some with rope in it, and that can be great for some dogs, but it, to me, it's like if it's something they can chew off of it, that's more of a potential choking hazard. And before I talk about the last way that this can be dangerous to your dog without you ever realizing it, I wanna talk about kind of why, really quickly, I love the Kong. I mean, not even just the Kong, a Kong or even a smart feeder. Let me show you what that looks like. Like this, are especially helpful tools for dogs of all ages to portion out their meals. And even in this, you can freeze it because you can put some of their food in here. If you feed a dry food, you could put some raw goat milk or bone broth in with it, then freeze it and then feed it to them so they have to kind of work out at it. But it's just an easy way to slow down feeding time, give them a way to work for their food and mentally stimulate them, which is so important. Should you be working with your dog during mealtime and kind of making them work for it, do some sits and downs and things like that? Absolutely, like that to me is the optimal way, but we're all human. We don't always have the time to do that. And sometimes we just don't even feel like it. This is an easy way to give them something to work on because you've got to remember guys, like. Dogs like having a job, and giving them a job is a good way to keep them happy and healthy. In addition to that, this is such a great way, hi baby, hi, to get some extra nutrients into their diet. So if you are feeding a dry food or a kibble, if you wanna see what I recommend for a type of a kibble food, you can click the video linked up here, but you do want to give them some fresh food options in their diet, but maybe you can't feed them a full fresh food diet because of budget. You can stuff some fresh food in here, mix with some of their food, and then soak it in some bone broth with no salt or seasoning, freeze it, and let them work at it as a way to give them a little power boost, huh, Finn? Mwah. You love it, you love it, yeah. It's a good boy. Oh. He's like, fill it with my food already, ma. Now, this next way that this can be dangerous is some dogs may be allergic to rubber. I don't love giving my dogs things that are made of plastic or rubber. It's not the end of the world, and obviously I do. I'm just saying it in a perfect world, they would just eat out of ceramic and high-grade stainless steel. But if your dog is having some allergy type issues, maybe they're getting some breaking out by their mouth or some itchy dry skin, they could have an allergy or an intolerance to the rubber ingredients used in this or any of their plastic toys. So keep that in mind when you're giving this to them. If you are continuing to see issues, if you take this away for a couple months and you see that resolve, they may have an allergy to this. They're just like humans in the sense that they could have intolerances. Now I know the next question is gonna be, okay, so what toy can I leave with my dog unsupervised when I go to school or work? And my answer is, I don't know of any that I would feel 100% comfortable recommending for you to leave with any dog of any age unsupervised. And I know that it's not the answer you wanna hear because you think your dog wants something to do, but in a perfect world, I don't recommend to leave your dog alone without a break for more than 
four to five hours estimated at a time, whether that means you come home during your lunch break, you have a, another family member that can come home during the middle of the day to let them out, a dog walker, a friend, a neighbor, whatever it might be, uh, I recommend that instead of worrying about leaving them something to self-entertain themselves, to instead give them plenty of mental and physical exercise before you leave for the day, make sure they have a way to have a break midday to give them a little bit of mental stimulation, and then you give them a lot of physical and mental stimulation at the end of the day at minimum, and this way, while you are gone, they're not needing to self-entertain because you've already exercised them and given them lots of ways to work their mind, think creatively, work on a certain job, whether it be like basic obedience or playing brain games, and of course some physical exercise, you know, like a leash walk or playing some light fetch, or just going on a regular walk and letting them sniff around the neighborhood. Okay, now I wanna talk about what I love stuffing in this Kong and different Kong recipes, if you will, for nutrient-dense powerhouse foods and I'm going to talk about that in this video linked right here so I'll jump oh, click this video linked right here and I'll jump over there with you and we'll talk about some really fun recipes for a Kong. Please don't forget to click that subscribe button it means the whole damn world and I hope you have a beautiful